The first trailer for director Todd Phillips' Joker has arrived, and the Joaquin Phoenix-led origin story looks, in a word, terrifying. Here are some of the small details you may have missed in one of the most interesting trailers of the year so far. Struggling comedian Arthur Fleck is first seen sitting in the office of his therapist, who asks him if it helps to have someone to talk to. He doesn't answer. His first spoken lines in the trailer, heard in a voiceover as he makes his lonely way up a set of stone steps, makes reference to his mother. She told me I had a purpose. To bring laughter and joy to the world. A part-time clown and struggling comedian, Fleck appears to have taken her advice to heart. But there are clues that their relationship isn't necessarily the healthiest. Fleck is seen bathing his mother as if she were a child and dancing with her as if she were his wife. These are the only times she appears in the spot and the only scenes in which Fleck looks genuinely happy. It can be implied from the therapist's question that Fleck would never share his inner darkness with his mother. There are also hints that his mother might actually be the reason for Fleck's troubles. He appears to be filling a caretaker role here. The specter of mental illness looms large over the trailer. Early on, Fleck is seen scribbling in a notebook. The page is labeled jokes, but the sentiment scrawled out in increasingly large letters at its bottom isn't particularly funny. It may be that Flex's mother's own struggles with mental illness will have a part to play here, further suggested by the fact that he's seen visiting Arkham Hospital, where he is visibly disturbed as a patient sharing his elevator thrashes about on a stretcher. Who is he visiting there if not dear old mom? The very next shot sees him and an audience at a comedy club called Pogo's, incidentally the stage name of John Wayne Gacy, where we hear the Joker's singularly unhinged cackle coming out of Flex's mouth for the first time. Could his mother's decline as a result of mental illness be what drives him over the edge? One very brief shot in the middle of the trailer might grab your attention if you're a classic film buff. An audience is seen gathering outside a concert hall called Wayne Hall to catch a screening of the Charlie Chaplin film Modern Times. The more familiar one is with Chaplin's life and work, the more significant the shot feels. Though he was a pioneer of cinema comedy, there was an underlying melancholy to Chaplin, informed by his difficult upbringing. He had an absentee father and a mother who was eventually committed to an asylum. Chaplin would eventually rise to fame behind a pale-faced, clownish persona. Even the titles and production histories of some of his works are thematically tied to the content of this film. There's The Circus, about a clown who can only make people laugh unintentionally. During its filming, Chaplin's mother died and he went through a divorce. Then there's Limelight, a later work featuring Chaplin as a washed-up comedian who literally performs up until the moment of his death. And there's Laughing Gas. You can probably put that one together. And there's Modern Times itself, in which Chaplin's beleaguered assembly line worker is hospitalized after suffering a nervous breakdown. Joker may be the first film to focus squarely on the villain rather than Batman, but the trailer goes out of its way to let us know that Flex's history with the Wayne family will be long and tangled. While Phillips has insisted that his flick will be a true standalone film with no sequels, that doesn't mean he won't in some way explore Fleck and Bruce Wayne's relationship to each other. The trailer hints at the fact that Fleck may set young Master Wayne on a dark path early in life. During one sequence, in which Fleck is shown lovingly handling a gun, there's a talking head on his television. What kind of coward would do something that cold-blooded? Someone who hides behind a mask. This man happens to be none other than Thomas Wayne, played by Brett Cullen. A later sequence finds Fleck outside of Wayne Manor's gates, playfully engaging with young Bruce, played by Dante Pereira Olsen. He then reaches through the gate's bars, pushing the boy's lips up into a twisted smile. Thomas Wayne will apparently serve as an antagonist to Fleck. Will the comedian follow in the footsteps of another cinematic Joker, becoming the one to commit the murders which result in the creation of his nemesis? There are few actors of greater stature than Robert De Niro, and his casting in Joker can certainly be seen as something of a coup for the production. It can also be seen as something more. Phillips has made no secret of the great Martin Scorsese's influence on his film, and De Niro has appeared in some of the director's greatest works, including Taxi Driver, which features iconic shots of De Niro's shirtless poses very similar to those struck by Fleck in the trailer, and The King of Comedy, which may be somewhat of a blueprint for Joker. In Scorsese's film, De Niro plays Rupert Pupkin, an aspiring comedian with severe mental health issues of his own. A chance meeting with talk show host Jerry Langford, played by Jerry Lewis, convinces him that he's finally gotten his big break. 
But when Langford shoots down his request to appear on his show, Pupkin resorts to drastic measures. He kidnaps Langford with the help of an accomplice and, for his ransom, convinces the authorities to proceed with the taping of his show with Pupkin as the opening performer. He proceeds to deliver an absolutely killer set, parlaying the appearance into nationwide fame, a result which, in true Scorsese fashion, may very well have been all in his troubled mind. Considering that De Niro portrays a talk show host in Joker, and that Fleck is seen waiting in the wings of his show, it's safe to say that a similar dynamic may come into play. The trailer's closing shots feature Fleck in full Joker mode. His hair is dyed a bright green with makeup in full effect. There's a bouquet of fake flowers in hand while he strides purposefully down what appears to be one of Arkham Hospital's halls, wearing a less-than-mirthful expression. He's also seen in the same garb performing a triumphant dance on the very stone steps he's shown traversing at the beginning, and his look is more classic Joker than at any point in the trailer. Hardcore DC comic fans will have a special appreciation for the look. It's very similar to the Joker's design on the cover of 1991's Robin 2 issue number 1. The makeup is different, but it's obvious that the Joker's costume designers did their homework, crafting a look more visually evocative of the comic's clown prince of crime than perhaps any we've seen on film thus far. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about Joker are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.